Live on WFLA Now, this is Run for Fun with running enthusiast Lee Spann. All right, let's go. Welcome back to the Stream Center for this week's episode of Run for Fun. This show focuses on ways to incorporate running into your life so that it adds joy and you want to continue to do it as part of a healthy lifestyle. It cannot always be about running hard because that leads to burnout and injury. I'm your host, Lee Spann. I am uh, a meteorologist here at WFLA in Tampa, but I've also been running now for uh, about 14 years or so. And certainly for the first part of that time, I was doing all the wrong things. So then I would often have to take like big breaks to recover after races and things like that. And then I met a group of runners who showed me what it was like to really just enjoy the ride. And now I get to share that with all of you in Run for Fun. And of course, the leader of that group, Coach Maria how are you doing this morning, Coach? I'm doing good. I'm getting excited for Boston. <laughs> you got your shirt on. Let me see. Let me see. Let me oh, see yeah. Shirt. Yeah. I got my. So what year 20, was that? 2012. Okay. Um, it was my third year in a row, and it was a very hot year. It was actually the only year that they allowed you to defer if you wanted to. Unfortunately, I was too stubborn to do that, so I decided to run it anyway. But, um, yeah, it was. it smelled more like a beach oh. in Athlete's Village than it than a marathon it was sweaty and, <laughs> it was and sweaty, sunscreen sunscreen hmm. it was it was interesting it was a very interesting race <laughs> so and so so it's coming up this next week uh not next week no. the, the okay. week after it's okay. the 15th the 15th okay yep. and um i know that's one of your favorite days of the whole year it is <laughs> i can't wait to go up there i i don't run run it anymore but i'm always there to cheer so yes and i have four runners running it so that'll be fun and uh, so today, I mean, we, Maria, you and I talk about the seasons of our lives a lot on this, lot. Do, on the, yep. on this show. Um, and we have to relearn as those seasons change, you know, th- how to rebalance your life and what work you have uh-huh. and, uh, and running. And so that's where we're going to bring in our special guest today, Superintendent Van Ayers. He is a, a, the superintendent of Hillsborough County Schools. Uh, Van, thank you so much for joining us. I know your day is super busy today, so we really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Lee. Great to be here. And uh, so you are not only in charge of 220,000 students in the seventh largest district in the country. It's crazy. You also go for basically a daily run, in, you know, almost every day. Yeah. So, yeah, I did my six easy this morning, got that in. Um, Good but job. yeah, that got it in, check. Um, so that I'm, feel, I, I, when I get them in, I, I feel um, so much better. So it's been. Um, for me, it's about being consistent, and um, it really helps me with my, you know, with my that that balance in my life for sure. So let's go back to uh, to how you became the superintendent, and then also how you got into running. So so talk talk us through born and raised here in Tampa. Yeah, we'll start so, there. Yeah, so born and born and raised in Tampa. Um, was a baseball player growing up, so did that. Played soccer for a little bit. So I always I was always faster than everybody else too. I remember what as a as a kid playing soccer. So I was always mm-hmm. you know and as a baseball I love player, those soccer players. Yes. Yeah, so speed <laughs> was always something that was kind of inherent with me. But played baseball. I played a little bit at University of Tampa as well. And then uh, took a teaching job over at Blake High School teaching chemistry. So did that for um, eight years and then became an assistant principal at Blake, principal at uh, Jefferson High School. So I got to go back to my alma mater as, as the principal, which was which was very cool to do that. Was it the same building? The same building, oh, same everything. Does it still smell the same? Yeah, it's everything. <laughs> All uh, schools smell the same. I they swear do. they do. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things in my office I had, like I didn't really think anything of it. I had my old letter jacket that I had from Jefferson back from 19, graduated in 1992. So I had the old letter jacket and I actually put it up in, in my office behind my desk in the principal's office. And what, I mean, the student, they, what the kids thought of that, they thought was, that was the coolest thing. Yeah. You know, wow, the old letter vintage, right? Right? <laughs> yeah. the old letter jacket hanging hanging back there. It's just interesting the things that kids get a kick out of, right? Yeah. And they got yeah. a big kick out of that. But that was one of the coolest things to go back um, to my alma mater, you know, to be the to be the principal there was pretty cool. And then uh, did that for four years and then um, move on to the district office in 2015 and been there ever since. And then my life took quite the turn <laughs> um, for sure um, in June of 23, June of, uh, of this year. Um, uh, became interim superintendent and then in November um, was appointed as the permanent superintendent and uh, great topic today because I have struggled tremendously um, with uh, this 
balance of trying to figure out um, the balance between um, the work I have running the seventh largest school district and also trying to balance um, my health and, and wellness as well. So look forward to the conversation today. Yeah. And so you were able to, because you, you, you had iterations in, in jobs before. You went from a teacher to a principal to you know, working for the district. So you've gone through this before. Was it, is this the hardest one that you've, that to, to make that, to find that balance for? I, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, where, the other jobs I had, it was kind of a set schedule, so mm -hmm. to speak, where I knew, you know, when I was a teacher, it was, you know, when I had to be there and when I was done. Of course, it was work, you know, before and after, but it was kind of a set schedule and I could take my brain and kind of set aside, this is the time I'm going to, you know, set aside to, to take to care, care of me. And um, with this job specifically, um, it's taken a pretty big toll. There's a lot of, it's a, you know, I want to do the very best I can in, in running this, um, you know, we're the seventh largest school district. We have a phenomenal school district uh, here in Tampa and um, I want to give it my all um, in doing that. And it's just, how do I, you know, how do I balance that out? Because um, it's been, a, it's been a, it's been a challenge. And you um, hear that from your runners all yeah, the time. I was going to ask you, what do you think is the hardest part? Like what's, is it just because you have a lot of night activities yeah, and so, then you're balancing sleep? Yeah. So yeah. it's absolutely that. So it's, um, I found that the only time for me to, to get it done is morning. So if I don't get it done in the morning, it's not mm -hmm. getting done. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's a fact. I've, I've tried to say, oh, I'll do it later. It never happens. Yep. So it has to happen usually between, um, you know, I preferably if I can get to bed on time, mm -hmm. I would like to be up at five, you know, up 515, try to get out the door by 530, uh, 536 o'clock and get that run in, mm -hmm. um, come back, you know, and then get ready for the day. But um, what is ha what happens is that you know even tonight I have a board meeting tonight. Who knows what time that'll get done? Yeah. And then it that leads throws into it throws yeah. it off, and then I'm tired, and then it's hard for me to you know get that that yes, day kicked off. And I, yeah. So yeah. and it's just it's um you know it's um going out for a six eight mile or speed work. It's um it, it's 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 a lot on the brain too, right? To, it's the commitment to doing that, and um so it's been it's been a challenge. How long have you been running marathons? So I've only, I've run, I've run my first marathon. I did the Space Coast. That's where okay. I qualified. And that was two years ago. So okay. I, that was my first marathon. I've really never um, started in, I think like most in Tampa, around mm -hmm. Gasparilla in like 2012. I was like, I'll run this Gasparilla. So I ran my first half marathon, I think it was 2012, ran an hour and 45. Mm -hmm. um, and started to like it, enjoyed it. And then just started to progressively, progressively get better and better and better. Um, and then um, it just became something that was a part of my life. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's more. When it, when it goes away, it, 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 it does impact the balance of, your, yes. of yourself. I mean, I know when you, when you, when you can't run, either if it's because you're. Um, thank you. Oh, the, uh, thank you. Helping me. Helping me. I apparently spelled your name wrong on the thing there. So sorry. Oh, I Did I, sorry, I apologize that the, the, we, will, we will get that fixed. But the, um, uh, but yeah, it throws off who you are. It yeah. feels like, especially when you've gone 10 years being so disciplined. And yeah. like I said, you probably hear this a lot from a your lot. clients. Yeah, and actually a lot of, of people are like you when they come to me. Mm. And I try to rem remind people that running has to add to your life as opposed to take away from your life. So if it's getting to the point where it's too stressful to run, then you got to come up with a better run plan that you can manage better. And that doesn't mean not running marathons. It just means you just might have to train a little smarter than, yeah. than you did before. Yeah. That's all. I, th I have noticed that it's with, um, like today I had a, I did six this morning. Mm -hmm. That to me is more manageable than when mm -hmm. I'm trying to get out for, cause I, cause I would, I mean, preferably I would like to get out for my, you know, four days a week for an hour just to get yeah. for my base easy runs. But that turns into, you know, eight something miles. Yeah. Um, if I find I, I helps me get out the door, if I know I can only, if it's 40 to 45 minutes, as opposed to an hour, hour and 15, it just helps me mentally to yeah. find myself. I can get out the door a little bit easier to, so your point, I'm just, mm -hmm. you know, trying to manage that a little bit. Um, has, which is has difficult helped. as a high achieving yeah. human yeah. being. Like people that run marathons well are high achieving. You're a superintendent. You're high achieving. We have a hard time not, well, the plan says this. <laughs> I have to do it. And if I don't do it, I can't run the marathon. The reality is you can do a lot less and still be able to run a pretty decent marathon. You might not be able to run as mm -hmm. fast as you ran last year, but you can still run a pretty decent marathon on less training, especially if you've run one or two mm. marathons before it's, you know, muscle memory, 
Um, and if you've been an athlete your whole life, you don't lose that. So we get kind of caught up as as you know, perfectionists. I have 90% of my clients as perfectionists. I'm like, guys, we got to cool it. We got to pull it back. And you know, it's because even today, like I feel like when I do just five or six, it's like, oh, I only did like, you feel guilty. Yeah. Like yeah. I only did five or six. Like, But you, but as we were so saying, you got to give yourself grace. Yeah. yeah grace. Like, yeah. You know, like, okay, right now, five or six is a lot. I, for me because of the timing yeah. and I yeah. did I didn't I need to also get my sleep so I should be proud of my five or six that's the grace that you have to give yourself right yeah it's hard and a lot it of is. times I'll put in people's schedule four <laughs> to six miles or six to eight miles because I want you to like listen mm. to your body and say hey look I'm tired today I only want to run four I also I shouldn't say this on the podcast but because people will catch on to me but I can tell who's getting burned out by when I give four to six miles they always go to four mm. Or they always do six. Like, if I have a runner that's always doing six, I'm like, okay, they're ready to handle more. But if they're always picking the low end, I'm like, okay, we gotta, we gotta be careful because they're never gonna come out and be like, I'm kind of burned out. Yeah, they're never gonna say that. Yeah, <laughs> I try to avoid that at all because, because our goal with this show and my goal for coaching is to make sure people are running until they're, you know, they can't anymore. Hopefully, in their 80s or 90s, you know. If we make it there. <laughs> yes, that's, and that would be the goal. Because if, you, if you're yeah. trying to do a healthy thing for yourself, like running and like exercising, yeah, it's easy to tip to the too much. That's what we're trying to oh, keep yeah. people from doing. So, yeah, absolutely. you know, you got to pull back when your body says no, and when your schedule says no, and when your life says no, and things, you know. It's, and sometimes that means not doing a marathon. Like I... When I was raising teenagers, I was I kept trying to train, I kept trying to train, and then I was like, you know what? These teenagers are kicking my booty. I can't do this. Like, I there was too much life stress for me to add the long run stress, mm -hmm. and you don't want to like add all the stress because then it's hard to come back from. So I just, I mean, I started training for multiple marathons. I was supposed to run London three years in a row, mm -hmm. and I just was like, I'm not gonna do it. I just, I can't do it. My body just can't do it. So. I know a lot of people are like, don't say I can't, but they're... <laughs> can't do it right now. And I could have done it, yeah. but I would have trashed myself. And then what would have the point been? Like, I don't want to go and run a, a bad marathon mm -hmm. or one that's not fun even. Like, I don't mind running an easy run. That's But that's a lot of to put on your body if you're not, you know... That's exactly what's gone through my head because I, yeah. I was supposed to have Boston coming up. I had qualified back in 20, ran Boston in 23, qualified and technically supposed yeah. to go in two weeks but I I basically had to Maria think the same as you did it was I just yeah. I I had to reset a little bit and yeah. I think that at this time in my life right now um I'm just gonna punt and kind of regroup um get well, through this school year and let me ask regroup. you a couple questions about this because yeah. I have a lot of thoughts on this um uh -oh. yeah <laughs> no she has a lot of thoughts about a lot of things uh -oh. no but my thought on when somebody's trying to decide whether to run a marathon or not how, like, is it because of the work stress that you don't want to take off for the marathon? Or is it because you feel like you can't run it as well as you ran it last year? Both. So Both the of first, so the, of course, Boston's on a Monday. Yeah. Um, so that will That's require tough. missing work on Monday. And then I yeah, have a board meeting on Tuesday. Yeah. So that would That's almost stressful. add a, more anxiety and stress that not yeah. being to work on Monday. And I got a board meeting on Tuesday. So it would add a little bit of stress and anxiety. Mm -hmm. Um to that as opposed to running a marathon on a Sunday. Um, second though is, you know, the, the other side is, is not feeling like you're going to run, you know, you're going to get done and be disappointed in the time that you, that you have. Right. Okay. So it's really, it's yep. really both for me. Um, but running on, on the Monday and the, the timing of, of April, um, you know, is, yeah, that's is tough, tough with your schedule. It's tough. Um, I am going to throw out something to you though. Okay. And I just want you to take it for food for thought. And this is because it's Boston. If it was any other marathon, I'd be like, nah, don't do it. Um, have you thought about going and just running it for fun and just not like not putting any pressure on yourself? I'm just going to go and I'm going to run a negative split and I'm going to have a good time and I'm going to enjoy the course and I'm not going to care what my time is um, because I myself have an autoimmune and I'm not able to qualify anymore. So I always said to myself, mm -hmm. I tell every one of my runners this. Every chance you have to be in Boston, you should be in Boston. I tell them that. Some people still are like, you know what? I, I can't do it. Because you don't know if you won't be able to do it someday. We right. never know that. We don't know. So just food for okay. thought. Yep. 
It would be tough. It's it, tough to go and put your ego aside, but I'd bet you have the best day of your life. And, <laughs> it would be a lot of fun. Going on, yeah, tagging yeah. on to yeah. that. If you don't trash yourself by going yeah. as hard as you can, then you're still ready to come to that board meeting. Yeah. On <laughs> right. I mean, That's when right. I say, you still got plenty of energy left yeah. for that big board meeting on Tuesday. When I say yeah. run for fun, you yeah. ran 303 last year. You you told me you were in like 250 shape. I would probably go to run a 320. Okay. And like just start easy, enjoy, get as many high fives as you can. Like, because Boston is. There's just, nothing like that atmosphere. Yeah. I mean. And when you're not running all out, sometimes you take in things you never would take in. Like, I wish on the daily. I mean, maybe not daily anymore, but there was a good 15 years where I was like, I wish I wasn't such a jerk. Like running that marathon, like, I'm going to go faster. And then I'd finish the race and be like, you should have done faster. Like, I just didn't ever do that. And so part of me, and now I do marathons like that, but I don't, I mean, I could do it with charity, but I'm, I've done, I've been a qualified runner. So I, that's a lot of work to raise money. You mm -hmm. got to raise a lot of work. Yeah. You got to raise 13,000 now. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So it's, it's just a thought. Like if you, okay. if it's going to, if it's going to, hurt your ego a lot which sometimes it does you have to be able to set that aside to do it but you know just food yeah. for thought yeah it's just i mean it, it i'll think about it okay yeah, yeah. yeah right and yeah. i'm already in the taper time too so that works yeah, out yeah, perfectly yeah, yeah, yeah. right in taper time taper for two weeks but, um do a hard taper yeah, yeah. but have it's some just fun yeah it's i guess i mean it's so good with the segment run for fun because you as as competitive as we are mm -hmm. you know i've noticed i mean as my so last year, 2023, Gasparilla, the 15K, I was a 57.30 or something, mm -hmm. right? This year, not trained, was an, I ran an hour 40, right? So you get done and you're like, Ugh. yeah. But, but if you go in right. with <laughs> that mentality. You have to go in with the mentality. Yes. If you're going in and like, and a lot of runners mm -hmm. will lie to themselves. They'll saying. be like, you know, I'm just going to run for fun. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, are you really running for fun? Because that means you're going out slower. And then they go out at their PR pace. And I'm like, Great. no, you weren't running for fun. You're just trying to take the pressure off yourself. But you're internally putting the pressure on. So you're just lying. <laughs> don't lie to yourself. Like, if you can't do that, don't do that. Yeah. But if you can go, and it takes practice. Like, nobody cares what your runtime is except you. Nobody cares. Right. Nobody, there's a, there's right. a, nobody cares. There's an influencer, yeah. a running influencer. And she makes merchandise that says that. Nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody cares but you. Like, really? No, even your family doesn't yeah. really care. And that's honestly, when you get to that point, you, that's where the balance really comes in. Because mm -hmm. it's like, I mean, only you can figure out what's best for you. Mm -hmm. Like, we can only figure out what's best for me. I knew for me, traveling to London and being away from my family and, and struggling through a race, even if I went out slower, wasn't going to be fun for me. Like, if it's not going to be fun for you, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Like Because it's still hard. hard. Yeah, it's still it, it, a even, hard marathon. Yeah, Even running for fun is, is hard. hard. <laughs> it's still hard. But it's, you know, I always say, like, just you just want to think of all the things before you make a decision. And you might make, not make a decision until, I mean, you already have your plane tickets, right? No, no, he hasn't even bought his plane ticket. <laughs> he's like I, me. That's I think, me. I don't I buy until last year. That was last year, too. A little last year. Tampa has great flights to Boston. Right. I will say Jet that. Jet Blue's right there. No, it, it definitely does. <laughs> um, all right. So we'll, so we'll back away from this for a little bit and talk about how when you were especially using, you know, the daily runs, how that helped you obviously get better in your career. I mean, you were able to... to to use these to set this tone. Running changed my, my life 100%, totally. Yeah. I mean, it was, I can remember, you know, two kids, you know, raising a family, you you start to get away from all that. Um, yeah. I can remember I, um, like most, start to eat too much, gain weight. And I can remember, you know, I got a, being an athlete growing up and then mm -hmm. getting away from that and focusing 100% of your attention on your kids and all they do, you forget about yourself. Yeah. Uh, and then getting back to, in 2012, getting back to, you know, to me once again and take care of me, taking care of me really made a difference in, in my mental well-being as well um, yeah. and how I feel. And I don't, again, we I, we run to be competitive. We have that competitive nature. But in the end, I, I run because of how it makes me feel mm -hmm. right and how it makes me feel um, physically, mentally, 100%. helps clarity. I mean, that's it just helped. It helps me. Um, so that that commitment, um, I think, helped help me all the way around. I think running, you know, gives me, I think runners, um, you know, adds that structure um, to your life and helps you be better all the way around. 
those yeah. at work, out of out of the out of um, out of work sure. as well. So when your rest day is your hardest, you've made it. It is true. Yeah. We, like when you're like, oh, I have something really important today. I have to run. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people be like, I don't want to be tired, so I'm not going to run today. I'm like, no, no, no. I want the energy so I can have a better day. Yeah. And it's it, you know, and we get in our. I feel like we get in our runner bubble. Yeah. And so every now and then, when I tell someone that I, you know, about running. And, and they have the negative reaction, which most okay. people do. Yeah. Like it, it drives it, me nuts. It, well, it also <laughs> it like drives it, me nuts. Like I, I, I'm like, what can I say to them to get them to understand how I feel? And you just can't. Like you, the, you, someone mm-hmm. has to get out and start doing it. And I, my husband was late to coming to running. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I was pretty late in my late 20s. He l- was later. And, uh, and I remember the first time that he came to me and said, I feel like I have to go on a run today. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> he was you do. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. that, that day, that day when it's like, that I is... have to put my shoes on and I have to go for a run. I'm not forcing myself. Yeah. It's like that, that's when people get it. That's when people get why, why we put this much effort yeah. into this balance to make sure that we have time to do it. I yeah. think that's the flex. Mm-hmm. Like, seriously, that's the flex. Like, not the marathon times as much or the 5K times or whatever. You're like, I'm flexing because I got to run today mm-hmm. and I like it. I yeah. Like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Reminded me that I want to get both of you guys. To, have you seen the rest day t-shirts, the rest day shirts? No. Like, no. Oh, they're pretty cool. It's a t-shirt. It says rest day on it. I'm going to get you guys both. Oh, yeah. yeah. Rest we would day. like it. Yeah. 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 Can you get one that says recovery week for the week? <laughs> <laughs> I do love <laughs> recovery week. <laughs> I do love a good recovery week. But I also have said, because, you know, on the on recovery days, you're supposed to run super, super slow. And, as if anyone cares, I do want to wear a shirt that says this is my recovery. Oh, yeah. Right, right yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah. As I like, yeah. j- I basically am shuffling down Bay Shore. I'm like, yeah. no, 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 everybody. I'm on recovery. I ran fast yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. again, they also don't care. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maria, do you do the recovery? So you usually like up three and then have a recovery week, like three up, one down? I type usually of- do two up two here, up. depending on the person. Some people, if they're a newer runner, can do three weeks up, one week down, but. Most and, of my runners can do two. And up. the one down is what about how much, what percentage of, is it? Also depends on the runner. Oh. Mm-hmm. But most people, it's like I do 20% less. Yeah. yeah. Run coaches always have that answer. No matter yet. It depends. Yeah. It depends. does depend. <laughs> I know. Depends. I well, that's, and that is why it coaches are, are helpful. That's is right. Because you're not, they're not, you know, you can find a lot of things on the internet and the interwebs uh, they're okay will tell from you all the things. The interwebs will tell you. <laughs> and, and it, it, is a, it is a generalization. Yes. But, you know, uh, the internet's not going to know if you're choosing four or six miles. Like you're, you're, oh, set, yeah. you know, you're not okay. Oh, I see that they're always choosing four. Maybe yeah, I have going, like yeah. mental tricks that right. I yeah. look in data where I'm like, mm, this person needs a recovery week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lee, what's your favorite distance to run? Is half it marathon. marathon. Oh, yeah, half. Half marathon. Yes. What was yours? Ten miles. I love ten miles. The straight ten. Ten miles. Ten miler. <laughs> There's so My few favorite. of those. I, I love them. Yeah. Huh. I, ten miles are ten milers and ten k's are my favorite. 10Ks are a strength race. Strength. Yeah, I enjoy the 10K. Yeah. Is that fun. your favorite? Uh, 10K, five. I, I, well, I was, uh, you know, like everyone, you get that 5K, like, I'm going to get my 5K town. I'm going to focus on 5K. So 5K, I've. Um, you just yeah. made Maria stay. She likes it when people I do like it, although 5K. I don't. Hate to say this out loud, but I don't really love a 5K what? myself. It just <laughs> hurts too bad. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts. But <laughs> like, stick your finger in the fire flame and yeah. see how long you can hold it there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's. I think it's. And this is why I've struggled this year. Is is it's it's easy to get out and run when you are progressing and you're getting better, right? So you go out and you practice, and my time gets better, and I go to it. I'm getting. I'm getting better. I'm getting good. I'm getting better. Then how do you react when your time goes well, the other way, right? And how do you stay motivated? Yeah. Take a plateau where it got worse. How do you stay? motivated to, to yeah. keep at it right that's where yeah, I, struggle. I mean that's like i mean i haven't had a pr since 2000 i think 2011 now since i got sick so so how do you how do you handle it um i have found i i just love the feeling of running i love how i feel i love pushing myself hard i love it like i i it makes me feel alive so i just find different things to be, make me happy with it i've found my friends my husband and I run together. Yeah. It's just, it adds to my life so much. Like I can't, I can't stop. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I got to get to is. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get there. You yeah, will yes. get there. You're yeah. kind of new at this. Like you get there. The more years you go, you kind of find like we get um, like a dew point. We'll do like a dew point PR or like a new age group PR. Or we do like 
um, we'll do a mileage PR or we, we try mm-hmm. to find smaller goals to get you excited that are not quite as big. Um, of course, when you're first starting with a marathon, it's exciting and you just want to keep, you're not, yeah. it's like, you're like a junkie. I like, yeah. got to get faster and faster. And we, we all kind of get caught up in that, but eventually. Yeah. And if you want to do it for a long time. Because yeah. you went from, you were telling me your first 5k. Yeah. So was... back in 2012 and I was at Blake, um, just getting into it. First 5k mm-hmm. was a 23, 42. And I was like really proud. I was like, yes. Well, as good. well you yeah. should be. That's great. Yeah. But and that, then, but. And then just started to kind of find structure, get on the internet, try to find, you know, yeah. and then um, ultimately got that time down to just last June was, I was always goal was try to get sub 18, sub 18. Mm-hmm. Um, barely did it, 17.59. So we'll take one second. That's, that's right. That's <laughs> best day, that was actually best well, day that's leftover. that's a sub three marathon all day long. Yeah. Easily. Sub three should be. There. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> it really should be if you put it in that calculator, but yeah. Yeah. Um, that's all about just training. You know, you just got to stay consistent over time. Mm-hmm. That's all. Well, and, and, and that the weather cooperates on your race day yeah, yeah. and all, all the things, co- you know, come together yeah. on yeah. race day. Yeah. But the uh, but, but yeah, it's in there. I mean, it, it, yeah. th- we talk about that. What is it that you were saying last week? I think, Maria, that like. For however many years, once you start running, you will you kind of keep getting better. For like 10 to 12 years. Yeah, so that's where yeah. we're sort you and I are both right, you know, just cutting yeah. to the end. I mean, that's of like, assuming you're training properly right. for well, 10 yes. years too, which a lot of people don't train properly first, so they don't train correctly. And then then they, the good news is you still have 10 years after that once you, you know, it's not like you can get better for a very long time. Yeah. Very long time. What's interesting to me lately too is my daughter who's, 21. She's a senior at UCF. So she's. My daughter's a senior at she UCF. She is. Okay. That's crazy. Yeah. They, they run back to. They might run in. Literally what, run in. What is her major? She's finance major. That's my daughter. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's crazy. We'll have to. We'll have to. Yeah, they yeah, probably we'll talk, know each other. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but she's. My daughter's starting to get into it. So she yeah, has. Yeah, mine too. She and really has like. Fun. That's guy. Talk about motivation. Mm-hmm. Like just seeing her progress and get better. I mean, she got her, you know she started setting goals for herself too. And, you know, as you know, 5k, she just did a 22, 44. Nice. Yeah. And her, her half, she did Gasparilla. Actually, she did Gasparilla, ran an hour 46. Good for her. So, yeah. She's really started to like, awesome. I mean, so it's helped me because I find myself like I'm much better coach than I am a <laughs> athlete. Cause like, yeah, I coach her not- and I hear myself saying things to her and I'm like, well, heck I don't do that. Yeah. Like, oh, trust <laughs> me. I do that all the time. <laughs> right. Cause but, I, I, I will, will often, you know, we, we have, I have this show and I will complain to my husband or to my best friends or whatever, and they'll go like, "There's a podcast you can watch you can <laughs> yeah, yeah. To that, yeah. that tells you how to <laughs> make people better about it." I was like, "Yeah, I'm aware. We all do better. Do as I uh-huh. say, yeah, yeah, not yeah, as yeah. I do." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's great that you get to help. You know, you can at least hear that coach's voice in your head. Yeah. Well, we'll sure. have to get them together because I would really like my daughter to have somebody to run with, so she's not running alone on campus. Yeah, she drives and runs around the baseball, the oh, cool athletic we'll complex. To, we'll yeah. have to hook them up. Yeah. For sure. Um, so what are you, th- so what, one of the things that Van was telling me about earlier when we were running, when we went on our, our little run together down yeah. the river walk, is that, you know, there's some on his easy runs, he kind of goes through his day, mm-hmm. but then one of the things he likes about the workouts is that you can't think about anything. Yeah. So it is like, I'm going to clear my brain and mm-hmm. I am just going to focus on this is 600 meters and then this is another 600 meters. That's meter. a really good point. Yeah. It, well, yeah, it really is. Like when you get those workouts and you're in the middle, I mean, nothing else matters but surviving that, yeah. <laughs> that repeat. <laughs> <laughs> nothing else in the world yeah. is just like, you're not, you're no longer. That's interesting. Uh, I count steps. Ooh. I count steps when I'm doing a workout. Huh. Just to kind of keep, yeah. But I just it busy, clears like, my mind. Okay, yeah. I was like say, I'm not the... thinking about anything but my steps. Step, 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 step. Hmm. And then it's how you know? And then going back to it, since this is a right, work life run yeah. balance, yeah. let's also talk about if you have one of those hard workouts. How did then you not? How do you make sure that you've eaten enough and all that to keep going to have the balance the rest of the day? Because sometimes those workouts will wipe you out. Yeah, wipe you out. But you still have yeah. a board meeting in the evening mm-hmm. or whatever it is. So make sure. Yeah, we do know, you plan yeah. your food or do you? Um, usually I run fasted, even oh, with gosh. workouts. I know. Yeah. I know. It is better <laughs> for boys to do it than girls. Interesting. But. So, but, but then afterwards, like yeah. you're just making sure, you know, you're going to make sure that you're, that you can make yeah. it the rest of the day. Yeah. For me, it's, it's mentally trying to get myself, my head wrapped around the workout. Yeah. And then my head mentally wrapped around the, 
the day still to come. Yeah. So it's like, am I adding another thing on top of this this day that I have in front of me? Yeah. Um, where the easy runs, I find myself I can get that easier because during that easy run, I'm 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 thinking work almost right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where so it's it's the workouts is where I struggle is making sure I get those in. Well. Yeah. I'd rather you run easy anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, okay, that's what Marie always says. Is that, in a is marathon, that, the, the easy run is the most important. And yeah, then second is tempo, actually. That you, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. so that if you were if you're struggling with anything, just run slow. Yeah, like mm. just, just don't run. Worry. Get your aerobic capacity. But in it's yeah. so nobody hard. nobody can take it away. But it's so hard when the plan says. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, I know, and I've I've been really helping my runners try mm -hmm. to see yeah. that the plan is not the be all end all. I mean, there's still a few I got to work on, but yeah. um, what's your favorite workout? Like what's your favorite workout? Oh gosh. I really love 800, 300 workout, but that's a 5k workout, like 800 at 5k pace, 200 jog recovery, 300 at mile pace, 300 recovery. And then you do that three times. Don't stop in between just constant moving. What's after the three, 300? 300 is that another hard, job? 300 easy. And that's mm. one set. So it's, everything's a mile. So you do it three miles. I think that's the one that I had such a tough time on last week. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of my favorite workouts. <laughs> I, the Well, yeah. to my credit, I thought I was killing it. I was up Bayshore. I, was like, ah, I am killing this workout. And then I turned around into the 25 mile an hour wind. Yeah. Oh, that kind of The stinks. wind. And I was like, oh, nope, not killing it. I'm pretty it. sure I, I got a text that running was dumb that day. Yep. Running, yeah. was, <laughs> I was, running is stupid. Why do we do this? <laughs> yeah. The next podcast will be yeah. running is dumb. <laughs> running is dumb. Why are we doing this? Uh, so, but uh, again, but we good, good runs and bad runs. <laughs> yeah. What was, what's your favorite workout? Um... I tend to find myself going to 400s, like a, just yeah, a base eight by 400. Fun. They're yeah. fun. Mile warm up, eight by four. Cause it's, and again, it's what you're like, my, I can manage my head around that. Like, okay, yeah. it's not too much. It's, I can go do this and then still, you know. Yeah. But the ones I get, I mean, when you get those, and I haven't done them often, but, you know, you get into those 10 by 800s, it's just like, oh, yeah, they're brutal. Brutal. Yeah. The 400s, 400s are fun if you do descending recovery. If you do like, 400 and then you take 60 seconds like standing recovery and then then do another 400 take 45 seconds and then do another 400 take 30 seconds and then do it again and you do like 12. It's very fun. Standing. It yeah, is standing. It is uh it is an awkward feeling to just stand there. Yeah. Especially once you get other people are around it's you're like fun. I'm just standing here for 45 seconds. And you try seconds. to do them at 5k pace so you're well 5k I usually start at 10k pace and work my way down to 5k because you're doing 12. But it's a really fun workout. I'll try that. It's really fun. The, yes, the standing is it, it's very awkward at first. Very yeah. awkward at first. I had this one coach that she was great, but she would do the workout ahead of me because she was a 246 marathoner and I was a 330, so I was way behind her. But she'd say, We're doing 400s today. And I'm like, How many? And she's like, Just follow me. I'm like, oh. <laughs> And she was the coach at the school. So the football players came on the turf and she was running. We were just doing. 400s and we would she would give me 200 jog recovery so we would granny jog a 200 and that was the grannyest of granny jogs <laughs> and then we get we're like 12 in and i'm like how many of these are we doing mm -hmm. and we just kept going and the football one of the football guys was like hey coach how many are we doing today and she goes 20 and i was like oh, oh 20 400 <laughs> that was awful it was five miles of it sprinting. was awful yeah. five yeah. miles of sprinting <laughs> But yeah. look how but strong I, you were. I know. <laughs> so if you really, really wanted to get fun with the 400. Yeah. <laughs> do 20 of them. Yeah. The, uh, so um, we also have, let me, this weekend, where I believe this picture is from the, is this from the um, Race for Education? That was, I believe. Oh, it's coming yeah. up this weekend. It's coming up this weekend. Yeah. And we, you and I will be there as long, along with my running group will be there. Super. Um, we were led by a Hillsborough County principal. And, uh, and so it's a 5k that starts at Blake High School. So tell us how this, how the Race for Education got started. Yeah, so we just started um, three years ago. It's our third one. Oh, um, was, and actually it was pretty cool for me because I got to actually be on the, the building end of a race and kind of building the course. So yeah, I got to do hard. that. And I'll tell you what, trying to get a race course, and we looked at the whole Bayshore thing, that was like impossible to try yeah. to get all that worked out. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we worked it out. And Where uh, is it? So it starts right in front of Blake High School okay. um, and runs uh, south. Um, and then we loop back around 
Uh, what is that row? So, okay, okay. So we start in front of Blake. Um, run Which, south. Are we to going si- right so, south I know to so. Cyprus? Okay, south, like right or left? <laughs> left. <laughs> okay, so, left. You know, okay. You know, the, you know the bridge. Yeah. The oh north, yeah. No, you're starting right, right in front of that. Of right bridge. in front of that yeah. bridge. Okay, so, perfect. So basically, it's really a cool run because you just you are um, my, you're going south to Cyprus, loop around Cyprus, come back, head, then make a left as you're coming back. Blake's on your right. Go turn left down Main Street. Mm-hmm. You go down Main Street, loop back around. Then you oh, then you're coming back to Blake, and then you're making a left, and there's that bridge. You, so you're running over the bridge, down the bridge, and so armature works as you'll see the river yeah. armature works to the right. Then you run, or then the roundabouts down at the bottom, and oh, then cool. back over it again. So it's a double, it's a double bridge. Oh, the double cool. bridge. It's at a the double. End. Yeah. That's good. That'll be fun. Yeah, it's a it's a fun race. We did it last so, year. Yeah. Um, it was actually the last three miles of my 20 miler last year. Oh, I remember that now. Yep. <laughs> but the, uh, but yeah, so it's great. So it, where and that bridge is tough too. The bridge, you don't, it is a bridge tough. Is no joke. It's, it's no yeah. joke. That's a, yeah. Uh, uh, so, and what is this? What is the, so, the yeah. So this, 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 all these funds go to our Hillsborough Education Foundation. So this oh, just awesome. supports really all students, all schools within, uh, within our Hillsborough County. So it's our third one. It's really, you know, this run for fun, right? This is, we're going to raise money, but this is really about all of our community coming together and having a good, having a great morning together. Yeah. Yeah. So that's awesome. um, how so many people do you first have signed year, up? Do you know? So I think we're almost, well, you know, usually we're around a thousand. Yeah. Um, wow, I that's think. So we'll, it's, yeah. pretty, it's a pretty big race. Yeah, pretty big race. So we'll um we'll hit that. Um one of my best times ever though, the first one talking about run for fun. I actually ran in the uh, we have this ready Freddy costume, this big frog costume. I'll have to show you a picture of it. I ran yeah. the whole five K in this frog costume. Oh, that's nobody fun. knew who I was. Yeah, yep. It was the best day ever, just running in that's the frog awesome. costume, taking we- pictures and that's running. awesome. It That's the way to run for fun. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> running for fun with the. Fr- yeah, I have to get. Can we do it. Nah. I'm not gonna lie. I have a bad attitude when I'm in a costume. It's bad. It's really bad. I like things flap, and I don't like it. And I ran in a nun costume once. That's just sacrilege. Yeah, <laughs> actually. <laughs> but yeah, they bother me. The costumes. Like, well, the, yeah, the one I had, you just couldn't breathe because it was like breathe. you get so yeah. yeah. having to run and like lift up the. The, the oh, head yeah. to, <laughs> to get some air in. Kids, kids are screaming because <laughs> yeah. the head's coming off. Yeah. But they, uh, yeah. Uh, but but yeah, a, yeah, I appreciate for people that, that yep. wear costumes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It is. Yes. They. It's impressive, and and it's going to be great weather. I know. This thank year. you for bringing that weather. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. I Two mean, weekends beautiful. on our road. I know. It was uh-huh. so beautiful last weekend. So. So it's, yeah. Eight a.m. on um, Saturday. On Saturday. Going to be low dew points too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. We'll have fun. We will. Yeah. We will. Yeah, it's um, be great. So, Van, thank you so much for joining us. Thank Hope you. you really this has been awesome. It's been a <laughs> great. Yeah, it's yes. been very cool. Great right. to get to know you. The, yeah. Uh, yes, because I, I, while you have uh, this challenge, you are not the only one who has yeah. this challenge with like, okay, I was doing this. What can I do now? So hopefully we helped some other people as well. Well, now uh, I'm stressed because Maria's going to check Boston Marathon to see if I ran well, it. That <laughs> is, so I am non-judgmental. Uh-huh, I just uh-huh. give you things to think about. But, but speaking earlier today when she said that she had thoughts, she has thoughts on a lot of things. So okay. what we have allowed her to do is right. we give her a full minute to talk full about minute. things. Can I keep this at a minute? This was a requested coach drill. Actually. Okay. So this is the one minute coach's drill. This is, this is for Focus Sam. On I'm the negatives. Talk. Not my Sam. Well, my coaching Sam. Um, we're talking about the negative split. Boston is still a negative split course, guys. People don't think it is because it's downhill, but it is a negative split course. And I have heard so many runners say, I'm just a positive split runner. That's just how I do it. And that's cool for you to say, but I'm just going to tell you. You can run faster if you run a negative split. So you're not hitting your potential if you're running a positive split. This is with the exception of some of the Revel courses. Some of the Revel straight downhill courses are definitely positive split courses, and that's the way it is. But for the most part, the negative split is always the way that you're going to get your fastest race. So if you are that person that is saying, I'm a positive split runner, which I heard it this weekend, actually, from multiple runners. (laughs) So if you're that person, I'm going to tell you, you can run faster. You're running under potential. You went over by a second. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) But yes, it it is. It is. You know, that takes discipline. It takes a lot of discipline, discipline, especially when it's downhill at the beginning. And I will say Boston is less of a negative split than some of the other ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could run it pretty even. Um, a lot of the elites will run it pretty even, but they even even theirs will be like two or three seconds difference the first half 
versus the second half, which still technically makes it a negative split. So that doesn't mean each mile is faster than the next. Right. It means overall mm. the first half is slower than the second half. Yeah, so. I didn't do that. I was just yeah. my numbers. <laughs> no, and honestly, that. it's difficult it, to do in Boston. It, yeah. It's really difficult to do. And you know what that tells me? That you got a lot faster in there, too. <laughs> <laughs> She's telling you that you're a lot faster. You yeah. got a lot faster of a marathon in there, so. All right. Well, th <laughs> thank you so much. Hopefully, uh, everyone has a wonderful time this weekend. Come out and join us at the Race yes, for please. Education. Yep. Yeah. All right. We'll see you all next Thanks time. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Let's go.